Welcome to today's broadcast of North Idaho College Public Forum. The crew is comprised of NIC television students and your moderator is North Idaho College political scientist Tony Stewart. We're very happy to bring you a two-week series with guests from different parts of the world and they are in our country and they have been here to study the political process and elections that we have recently had. I want to recognize the Spokane International Exchange Council for making these programs possible, and we're very grateful to Rebecca Wolf, who I have worked with in coordinating our guests on these programs. In our first week, we have two guests. One is from the People's Republic of China, and our other guest is from the Philippines, and we're very happy to welcome to our campus and to our country. I introduce to you Ms. Shi Fengong, who is with the, the Chinese Academy of Social Sciences from the People's Republic of China, and it's a pleasure to welcome you to our studio and to our campus. And our second guest is Emmanuel Rabakal, who is the, I uh, understand, manager and newscaster for uh, the radio station DYML in the Philippines. Welcome to our campus. Thank you. Uh, we're just delighted to have you here and to ask these questions and to engage in this dialogue. And as always, I'm very happy to have regular panelists. Uh, dean Steve Schink, who is Dean of Community Relations and Development at North Idaho College, and I shall ask Steve to commence the questioning. Thank you, Tony. Uh, maybe we could begin by just getting to know one another a little bit better, and I wonder if you would share with us uh, something about yourselves personally, your backgrounds, what you do, um, where you live in your own countries, and how you came to be a part of this program. Mr. Rabakal, could we start with you? Yeah, thank you. As introduced, I'm Emmanuel Rabakal. I'm called Ma Manny by my friends. I come from the second large city of uh, the Philippines. Or, you know, the Philippines is an island. And uh, I manage a small community radio station, although this is a network Philippine-wide. We have 15 radio stations all over the country. We cater to, we are an AM radio station. We cater to the middle class and uh, we do a lot of uh, uh, community programs including soap operas and news and music. And Miss Fang Yang? <laughs> I'm from Peking, Beijing. <laughs> mm, I work with the Chinese Academy of Social Sciences and uh, there are many institutes in the academy. Mm, Mine is one of them. Uh, our institute is called the Institute for American Studies. <laughs> so you see, I do some research work on American politics. So I'm very glad to come here Excellent. to take part in this program. Well, now, obviously, you two don't do the same thing. Uh, mm -hmm. one, one is a journalist, and, and you are a, a researcher, a, a, an academician. Um, an academician. I have met a couple of the other people in your group, and I think they probably are from different occupations also. What's the common thread? How did, did you two b become selected to, to make this visit? Well, as far as I'm concerned, I just received the invitation <coughs> two weeks before uh, I have to leave uh, my country. And, uh, well, I was prepared all the time. I, this is my second visit to the country, although I visited only California last year. And, uh, well, I was uh, selected. I don't know what the criteria were, but uh, I, I really love uh, observing the political uh, activities, especially the political campaign in your country. And it gives us, especially me being a, at the same time also a commentator uh, of my radio station, and I talk a lot about uh, politics in my country, and it gives me a real insight of what's really happening in this country. If you'll ask me, I, I really thought that foreign policy will be the main issue in these elections, and we really thought that uh, we Filipinos, especially, as are of the perception that you'll be talking about our bases and this will be made as an issue in this in these presidential elections. I was shocked when I was in Washington D.C. I interviewed some people there and they didn't even know about the Philippines, much more about the United States bases in the country. And uh, well, I have a uh, uh, little. Uh, knowledge now about your political system. Although our uh, governmental system are almost uh, the same, although we don't have any electoral colleges we have, as you have here. We have a, a president, a vice president, two houses of Congress. Uh, but uh, in the uh, local levels, we only have the governor and the mayor. We don't have uh, 
your state uh, governor and uh, your city administrator, city manager, and the mayor, and so on and so forth. Ours is uh, a little simple. Is this also, is this your first visit to the United yeah, States? Yeah, it's my first visit. W were you, uh, like your colleague, surprised by some of the things that you observed uh, as part of our political process? Did that differ from what your research in China would have led you to believe? Pardon me. <laughs> is it that when you took a look at the election process in this country, as you're yeah. doing that now, is it different than you thought it would be from your studies in China? Different. Yes, he, oh, he mentioned yeah, that, it, that they, issues they are weren't very, as important. Very different, I think. <laughs> what, what are some of the differences that struck you? What sort of mm. things were different than you thought they would be? <laughs> I think maybe we, we haven't such election in our country, and uh, maybe we haven't uh, election in the real sense of the world. Mm. So. The whole process is a little uh, different it, for you. It's very different. I don't. I think it's they are uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, let me ask you a little bit about your itinerary. Um, I know you've made other stops besides mm -hmm. the, this television studio today. Uh, what else have you done, and what else are you going to do while you're while you're on this visit? Uh, we are we are divided into teams. By the way, we started in Washington, D.C., all of us uh, together, and we were divided into teams. Oh, no, from there we went to Baltimore, Maryland, and uh, from there we went, uh, my team, together with uh, Ms. Shee, went to Cleveland, Ohio, and from there we met again the whole uh, team, uh, the whole group, uh, met again in Houston, Texas, and from Houston we went to San Francisco, the whole team, and then we are divided again into uh, five or eight uh, teams, and my team, four of us, uh, are here in your uh, country or uh, in this uh, state of Washington, uh, specifically in Spokane. We'll be leaving tomorrow for New York, and that will be the last leg of, of the program until the 22nd, although I'll be staying a day more in New York. And uh, my program, I, as I requested, together with another Filipino, by the way, there are only two of us, the other is a lady, a television journalist also of uh, the number one city in our country, uh, will be going to Honolulu will be observing the SAMPAC and the East West Center and, and the other things that are of relevance to my country. Mm. I would like to ask a couple of questions. I'm a political scientist, so I feel uh, a relationship to your work because I'm in social sciences also. Uh, we do a lot of writing about our political system in this country, and I know part of our responsibility with your visit today was to compare notes with you and what we do, and I'll, I will try to do that for a few minutes. We have some criticism of our political system from the viewpoint that our elections at the national level, we have elections at a lot of levels in this country. We have the local city, county that you referred to earlier, and we have statewide in Idaho or Maryland, wherever you may be, and then our national elections. Sometimes those are held at the same time, and some are held at, at what we call off years when the national elections are not being held. And I say all of that to make this point. We're almost always in the election process. Uh, when this election's over, uh, well, when this show airs, it'll already be over, but when the presidential elect race is over, the losing party will start organizing for four years from now. <laughs> so we, we go constantly. And then when candidates announce for president in this country, they announce, they start working two years in advance very seriously, and they'll announce a year before the election. So my point is, we have very long elections. Uh, also, it's very expensive television, uh, advertising, for example. So we have very long elections, very expensive, and a lot of discussion, but your point was well taken. In this given year, we don't discuss issues much at this particular time. We deal with slogans and so forth. So I want to get both of your reaction to what I said. Uh, and first of all, did this surprise you when you came here that, uh, or how do you react to the fact that, that we have long elections, they're very expensive, and we don't discuss some of the issues we thought we would? I would start with you, and uh, what is your reaction to all of that? Oh, I, I, I think it's too expensive too. <laughs> and uh, maybe I I think um, it's, uh, I think sometimes it attached too much importance to image uh, rhetoric than essential things. <laughs> yes, Ms. Shi. Uh, 
how do you compare this with other places that you're familiar with, either in your country or other countries? Do you think that most other countries have shorter elections than we do, or, or would no, you have any No, I, I don't think so. Maybe you are, it's very peculiar. <laughs> yes, okay. I'll get your reaction. Yeah, uh, Tony, as what I said, uh, we ha almost have the same uh, system of government. Oh, we talk about politics so much, you know, so much that uh, we are even preoccupied with politics uh, rather than uh, the problems of the nation. We have a very long elections. Uh, and it's only now I know that you also have long elections here. We talk uh, about elections so much. Right after the elections, day one after elections, and we talk about the next election. We will be having another election in 1992, and uh, you know there are already political realignments. People have been supporting our president, President Corson Aquino, are now, you know, uh, having another coalition uh, against uh, the the coalition of uh, the president. And there are all, also even our vice president joined another coalition, and this is now the opposition coalition. And that's politics for you in the Philippines. I'd like to ask Nishia a question concerning uh, your country, and uh, so many of us have never visited and would like to do so. Uh, uh, I have visited some areas close to your country, but. Uh, would you tell us a little bit, for we who have not been there, a little about your political system and uh, what you see for the future and uh, as you're moving and also relationships with the United States and such areas as trade? Uh, that's a very broad question, but I want to give you some areas to talk about uh, what is happening in your country. You see, um, I think you know that um, we have only one party. Yes. Uh, yeah, it's Communist Party, and uh, <laughs> I don't know how to say. I think the leaders of the party uh, sensed some problem they have, and uh, they want to have uh, reform themselves, not only uh, in economic uh, area, but also political, the social system, they want to change all of that. And uh, I'm, I'm, you see, I'm optimistic about the future yes. in our country. In relation to the reform, we've been reading some about that. In all countries, there are different factions that want to go different directions. Yes. Are we reading it correctly when we say that when you talk about the reforms that, uh, or maybe you could be specific with some reforms, that there's a movement more towards uh, what we call industrialization and uh, producing uh, in, in trade with more parts of the world and so forth. Could you just tell us a little more about what path you think the reform is taking? Mm, I think I don't know exactly. And uh, maybe our leaders <laughs> don't exactly know how to do. But we, we, I think we just try. I <laughs> and uh, I think these years um, they have there are many many progress in our country. I have one more question before I go back to Steve. With all countries, there is at times where there's delicate relationships, and other times where it's much smoother. There's been some real problems between the Soviet Union and your country. And now with Gorbachev's policies in, in the Soviet Union, making some changes, some changes in your country, how is the relationship in foreign policy between the, the Soviet Union and China today? Is it, is it less tense or? Uh, Maybe less tense. Um, but I think it's um, a problem of foreign policy. It has very, uh, not very much to do with, uh, you see, domestic policy. <laughs> Thank you, Steve. Well, now for both of you, this is a, is this your first visit, and for you, it's a second, second visit, visit. But you only saw a, a very small portion of the country. Mm -hmm. Of course, there's a lot of country here to see yes. in an in an extensive visit, and many of them. But I'm I'm always curious about the reactions of people who are essentially seeing this area, this this whole United States, for the first time. What, what are some of your reactions? What were some of your surprises? 
things different than you expected them to be here? Yeah, uh, my first surprise was uh, I thought uh, the you have all the money in the world and uh, you have even the local governments is no problem. When I went to Cleveland, I was told uh, that they have problems of pollution or environmental uh, of the environment, and then they also need more money to to enhance the economy because uh, there were there is a problem of unemployment in that uh, part of the United States of America, and I was thinking that uh, because they are they're really asking for more money from the federal government, and I thought that the, the United States could just give the money and release it just like that, the way they are. Because, uh, you know, uh, we know for a fact that you are helping also the third world, especially the third world countries. And we thought that you're that rich and all your people, uh, all the, the, the states in this uh, big United States of America are really satisfied and have no problems with money. And uh, that I found out in, my, in, in the sorties that I've, been, uh, that I've been to. So basically, it's only that. And uh, let me repeat that uh, it is my perception and the perception of the Filipino people that you talk a lot about foreign policy here until I was really tempted to comment in one of the sessions that it is just a few, a handful of people up there in the Capitol Hills and, uh, and the White House, I believe, are making these foreign policies without even the knowledge of, of the average Americans. I want to get back to that in just a minute, but before I do, let me ask Ms. Shi, what, what about your first impression of this oh, country? What surprised my, my you? My first impression is your people. <laughs> I think the people in your country are very nice. <laughs> you see, uh, um, you see, we have, uh, <laughs> I don't know how to say, just, um, <laughs> Any they are very friendly and very, very, very nice. <laughs> any other, any other surprises? Any other things that you found were different than you thought they would be? Um, no. <laughs> All right. Well, let's turn back. To, let's turn back to foreign <laughs> policy. And I, you mentioned earlier that you thought that that would be a, a key issue in the election. Of course, this election is being characterized as one where there are no key issues really, and maybe that's not so different from most presidential elections in this country. My sense of it is that foreign policy is an issue in a very general sense. It's been discussed in terms of the, of the relative strengths of the two candidates. But um, to be specific, no, I, I would have to agree with you. I don't think there are a lot of specifics being discussed. You mentioned the, the bases, military bases in, in your country. What's, what's the impression of your people about that? What's their feeling about U.S. military presence in the Philippines? It depends uh, in what fence you belong. Uh, for example, most of the senators uh, are of the impression that the United States basis in a country is for the interest of America and not interest for the interest of the region. But in the lower house, we call that uh, the House of Representatives, just like what you call it here, I would like to believe that they are for the retention of the basis. I am very happy when I read about uh, an agreement signed already in Washington about uh, the compensation for the year 1990 and 1991. Mm -hmm. And, uh, well, uh, most Filipinos, uh, I, I think I'm very safe telling you this, most Filipinos as of now are really for the retention of the American basis in my country. Of course, we are in need of money, and uh, this is not uh, blackmail as uh, what some, uh, some leaders uh, in your country said, that this uh, sort of a blackmail asking for more uh, compensation package, uh, if only for your base to be retained in our country. No, I think it's just fair for you also to give us a little more because we're only receiving less than two hundred million uh, dollars a year before when you are given more, giving more to Egypt, who's, who don't even have, who doesn't even have an American base, and Israel, and why not in a country when you are occupying hundreds of thousands of hectares uh, of land in my country for your bases. How many U.S. military personnel are in the Philippines today? Oh, uh, I could not be very sure now. Uh, uh, hundreds of uh, uh, thousands of them. Is it a significant economic impact on the country? I, I should say yes. It has helped uh, the economy of uh, the Philippines, especially in that part of 
of uh, the country. Yeah, uh, we don't deny that. It really has helped employment, uh, uh, buying our, our market, our food, because you do buy some of our foods there. Mm -hmm. It really helped. Uh, but over and above these, there are some, some uh, issues that uh, have to be really uh, be negotiated. While we're talking about U.S. military presence in other parts of the world, I was surprised, and it seems like I'm surprised by something almost every day, but I was surprised to see in a newscast recently that the United States and China jointly operate um, very sensitive, sophisticated, long-range listening bases on the border with the Soviet Union, and that that's one of the ways that we monitor uh, Soviet nuclear tests inside their own country. Uh, our, our, I was totally unaware of that relationship. Is that something that most people in China know about? And how do they feel about oh, it? I they don't know this. You didn't, well, that's, that's well, I think good. maybe it's incredible, I think. It's, it was a surprise to me, too. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> this, this goes to, uh, to some other areas, too. In the United Nations, the People's Republic of China and the United States have joined forces on a number of issues that deal with the Soviet Union's uh, movement into Africa and other places, that we have some common concerns that we do. And I hadn't read that either, but uh, th th there are different areas where that's happened. I, I would like to maybe make a short commentary on our presidential elections. We're like all other countries, I suppose. It varies from time to time. And what you're seeing this time may be different than what was in 1980 or 1968 and so forth. Uh -huh. I, I would just like to say and th that ask if that is true in your country. Uh, although we have not had a lot of issues in this particular campaign, uh, sometimes that's somewhat determined by the events in the world and, and uh, in our own country. For example, in the 1960s, particularly the 1968 election, the, the, the issue in the presidential election was foreign policy and it dealt with the Vietnam War. Mm -hmm. We've had elections where it was the economy, certainly during the Great Depression, how we would deal with that. I, I'm just simply saying that sometimes events are so strong they determine the course of presidential candidates and other candidates for the Congress and so forth. Uh, with that in mind, I would like to say that at one point in this country some years ago, there was a great debate and discussion about nuclear weapons and their spreading around the world. <clears throat> and because of that, I think it has impacted to some extent uh, agreements such as the one between the United States and the Soviet Union recently and, and, and a small arms reduction. Uh, and so my question is, how do you feel and your people of your countries feel concerning the whole nuclear issue and where are we headed and is there a lot of support for trying to get the arms race under control? Uh, go with the, the view of the People's Republic of China first. <laughs> I, you see, I'm not familiar with this kind of issue, but I think anyway, nuclear weapons are not good. <laughs> But <clears throat> if the people that you know and that you talk with, would there be great support among the general population if to uh, try to put more pressure on all governments in the world to, to deal with this issue? Uh, we hear a lot that there's a common thread among people around the world, that not, not so much in the leadership of countries, but with the people of, about how serious this problem is. Oh, I think common people view about nuclear weapons. I don't think there will be a you see, nuclear war. <laughs> so, I, I'm not <laughs> quite concerned about that. <laughs> yeah, we're very much concerned about that. You know that we have, uh, we're hosting your American bases yes. in our country and uh, well there are even some debates about uh, the presence of nuclear weapons in our country. Well, of course, we, we fear nuclear war, and uh, this, is a welcome, uh, this is a welcome development. You know, Kamran Bay is just uh, an hour away from my country, and uh, this is a, one of the biggest naval bases of Russia outside of the country. And uh, in the event of a nuclear war, of course, we'll be affected. That's why that's a welcome development. Thank you, Steve. There have been some very significant changes going on in the People's Republic of China, and there were some recently in the Philippines. Um, I'm going to ask you to guess a little bit now, but if you were going to look ahead 10 years from now, um, how do you see the way your countries are being governed is changing, and how do you see the relationship between your countries and the United States? 
I, I think I can't expect anything <laughs> in our country, but I think things will get things will be getting you see better and better. We see and the the relation between the United States and the, the People's Republic of China. I think the relation will be mm. increasingly better. Good. Mm. Good. And you? Oh well uh we, we had uh, a very special, and we still have the very special relation, relationship with your country. We really uh, wanted to go on with that, continue on with that special relationship, and I am uh, very uh, optimistic that we will continue on with that, and we'll uh, continue to help uh, each other uh, for the advancement and achievement of world peace. Of course, uh, you are the superpower. We are only a small nation. Most of the burden is on your shoulders. When you go back and you visit with your colleagues, because basically this is a, is a political fact-finding mission. You're here to observe our political system. What's the first thing that you're going to tell your friends and colleagues at the institute where you work? Uh, tell about what? About our election political system and the system? elections. <laughs> First thing, oh, I think you have, uh, uh, you are sure um, very democratic. <laughs> and your first impression, your first? Yeah, I will. I will try to compare. I will try to tell the people about my what I uh, found out here. I'll try to compare compare our presidential elections and your presidential elections, which is quite complicated, especially with that uh, electoral college. And of course, I will tell them that. Uh, well, uh, this also re regarding our American base, not to expect too much from America because you also have problems here. I think that's the, the two most important things I'll tell my people. Well, on behalf of Steve and our staff, I want to thank both of you for being on our program. We've enjoyed this interview. And again, I want to say welcome to our country, and we hope that you both will be able to come back at some future date. And uh, we also want again to say uh, a special thank you to the Spokane International Exchange Council for making this program available to us. And I would remind you they'll be with us again next week, some other guests from other countries, uh, when we'll continue to discuss how other people look at our country and our political process. Until then, please have a good week. I am Tony Stewart. North Idaho College Public Forum can be seen at the same time each week over this station. This production was videotaped earlier by an NIC student crew for viewing at this more appropriate time.